वेलकम टू लेक्चर 11 ऑफ मॉड्यूल 2 एंड दिस इज लेक्चर 21 ऑफ द कोर्स इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल लर्न अबाउट द फेनोमिन ऑफ प्योर डिफेजिंग एंड वी विल सी हाउ प्योर डिफेजिंग कैन बी इनकोपोरेटेड इन द लिन ब्लड क्वांटम मास्टर इक्वेशन अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट वी विल आल्सो डिस्कस अबाउट द डिजिबेटिव ब्लॉक इक्वेशन इन द कॉन्टेक्स ऑफ ए क्यूबिट दैट मीन्स when the qubit is there in the presence of various relaxation process including the dephasing so let us begin in the last class we discussed the so called quantum master equation as i said in the last class that the quantum master equation is the workhorse for dissipative quantum system almost 90% of the problem in quantum uh, dissipative system can be taken into account by this uh, equation and it's also known as the lindblad markovian quantum master equation it is markovian because uh, this equation which takes into account how the density operator changes uh, with time rate of change of the density operator so each point in time the time derivative is given by the present state so rho here refers to the density operator uh, corresponding to the present state only there is no memory and this is why this master equation is more aptly termed as uh, markovian okay lindblad markovian quantum master equation and uh, it has two parts one part takes the coherent evolution part of the system takes into account and another part refers to the dissipation here l is a operator and this operator operates on another operator that is the density operator and l is this is known as the super operator because it operates on an operator or also it known as the lindblad operator and this operation has a particular structure where uh, this is the structure that we discussed here this operator a is an arbitrary operator through who is uh, interaction between the system and the environment takes place and in this equation uh, this gamma refers to the uh, relaxation uh, decay rate of the relaxation process a operator a there may be many many uh, relaxation processes uh, in a particular uh, uh, system quantum system Uh, depending on the situation okay so here this sum it is all the processes has to be taken into account that's why this sum is there so gamma j refers to the decay rate corresponding to the relaxation process say refer uh, discussed by or referred by the relaxation operator aj now this particular structure is extremely critical because um, this particular structure guarantees that this density operator remains hermitian uh, regardless of how we choose the decay rate gamma and the relaxation operator a and trace of rho is equal to 1 so probability remains conserved and rho remains semi positive definite then we went on to discuss some examples first we discussed the two level system relaxing via the so called spontaneous emission um, and we were able to derive the rate equation appropriate equation for the probabilities rate of change of the probabilities but in addition to that we also got to see that how the coherence is decay and coherence is decay at a rate gamma by 2 uh, and we also discussed the case of thermal excitation of a two level system where the atom is going from the ground state to the excited state due to the thermal excitation this also we discussed what it turns out that whether we have spontaneous decay or thermal excitation the off diagonal elements decay, still decay and it decay at a rate gamma by 2 and we discussed the so called damped harmonic oscillator at zero temperature and in this case only one process is there that is the downward transition and we worked out how the uh, probability of finding n photons the rate of change of probability of finding n photons we worked out using the quantum master equation and also we saw how the average number of photons changes with time so 
and apart from that we found that the exp the expectation value of this annihilation operator decays at the rate of gamma by 2 we discussed the harmonic oscillator at finite temperature and here uh, two processes may be there one is the downward process for downward process the uh, operator a this relaxation operator can be uh, taken to be represented by the annihilation operator where the upward process is by the creation operator and here we found uh, we saw that uh, this uh, decay rate downward decay rate is basically modified by a factor of uh, n thermal uh, this is nth which is the average number of thermal photons and this is given by this particular equation on the other hand uh, the upward transition rate is give, is uh, modified uh, by uh, this uh, nth gamma nth in fact uh, at zero temperature there will be no thermal excitation so nth is zero there and so we will have only one process that is the downward uh, process downward decay process and the expectation value of the average number of photon the rate of change of expectation value of the average number of photon is given by this equation here also we found that the the expectation value of the annihilation operator it decays at the rate of gamma by 2 and in fact this solution is represented by this particular diagram here and you see that depending on where we start suppose the initially we have the average number of photon is greater than the thermal equilibrium value which is nth then it will decay and approach the thermal equilibrium value on the other hand if the average number of photon is zero initially at time t is equal to zero then the uh, as time goes on it will approach the equilibrium value so uh, now let us go back to the case of transmon or the qubit system in the context of circuit qed and i want uh, now to discuss a very important decoherence phenomena and that is called pure dephasing so this is what we are now going to discuss pure dephasing is a process where we don't jump between energy levels say we have this two level system this is our ground state and this is our excited state and let us say the energy difference between uh, these two level is h cross omega atom let us say this one has um, energy h cross atom by 2 while the ground state has energy say h cross minus h cross omega atom by 2 and this is what energy and we in pure dephasing we are not having upward transition that means say going from ground state energy to the excited state energy or from the excited energy state to the uh, ground state energy we don't have uh, uh, such kind of transitions rather uh, what happens is that uh, we it turns out that uh, that even though there is no such kind of transitions the off diagonal elements in the density matrix for example this term or say this term which are known as the coherence uh, terms in the density matrix which we already know these terms actually decay and this is what this decay of uh, coherences is basically known as uh, dephasing or pure dephasing because you know that these off diagonal elements in the density matrix gives the phase relation between the amplitudes of the amplitude coefficient of the ground state and the excited energy state let us explain uh, it further let let us understand it properly uh, let us say uh, say one of the energy levels let us say this upper energy level 
is fluctuating with time so this is a fluctuating with time that means we are not having a very sharp energy level sharp width rather it is fluctuating with so with time and the ground state is of course it is intact let us say the question is now what happens the question is what happens uh, if or what happens to the state vector or the wave function wave function of the system of the system uh, when we say start from when we start from a superposition state superposition state why superposition state because as uh, our discussion uh, we it is important for us to have uh, this kind of state because we are interested in the phase relation between these amplitude coefficients uh, ground state amplitude coefficient and the excited energy state uh, amplitude coefficient cet this one as well as this one okay so we want to know what's actually going on if one of the energy level is fluctuating with time uh, if the energy levels remain eigen levels that is if they are still remaining as the eigen state of the hamiltonian uh, all the time then the uh, the wave function at any arbitrary time we can write it as say cz uh, this is ground state and it would have say e to the power i omega atom t by 2 because you see this plus i am getting because minus of minus okay that's why i am getting plus uh, you remember that uh, you have e to the power minus i by h cross e this, this is what we have this coefficient varies like this so actually this is what we are uh, writing here for the first term and in the second term i have c e e and i have e to the power now i will have a term minus i omega atom t by 2 and in addition to it i will have a i phi of t where phi is the phase and uh, in fact that is the energy level uh, excited energy level which is fluctuating with time so phi of t is 1 by h cross so because this is fluctuating with time so this is basically integral over the fluctuation so this is the energy fluctuation term so this is the phase term okay however as we know <coughs> that to get uh, a more appropriate picture of the situation because in real experiment many many repeated measurements are going to be made we need to look at the density matrix so to get a real picture so we have to basically look for the density matrix so density matrix would be psi of t psi of t like this uh, but which has to be average over all the fluctuation okay now in fact uh, what we will get if we uh, do it this straightforward calculation uh, starting with this um, uh, wave function you should be able to show that this coherence term say e uh, zero e this uh, matrix element you can show that this would be simply c z c e star e to the power i omega a t and then we have this e to the power i phi of t and this is averaged over the fluctuation clearly we don't have transition between the energy levels uh, that means when we are not having transition between the energy levels uh, however the off diagonal elements has a free time evolution that is given by e to the power i omega a t and in addition to that we have a fluctuating phase factor so this is our fluctuating fluctuating 
phase factor and in fact this represents free evolution free evolution okay we know that if we take the average of a complex uh, quantity we obtain a result that has a magnitude less than one so this implies that the magnitude of the off diagonal element so if you take the magnitude of this uh, term e to the power i omega a t this is what we have this one and apart from that okay this is what i have here so if i take the modulus or magnitude so what it turns out that this would be less than this guy would be actually less than one and so therefore you will find that this is overall less than this quantity c z c e star okay so what it means that instead of uh, having a pure state because the density matrix this is actually now getting decayed overall it is less than one because of this is less than this uh, quantity so we will have a mixed state this implies that we will have a have a mixed state rather than a pure state because the we are losing information about the initial phase because as you see that because of the energy fluctuation um, we are having uh, this particular term because of the fluctuation this of diagonal elements its magnitude is getting suppressed and in fact if the in fact if the of diagonal component is suppressed to zero completely suppose this of diagonal elements is made to be this whole thing gets zero okay then we will uh, we will not know any information about the phase relationship between the complex amplitude cg and uh, ce so if say of diagonal if of diagonal element is or component is suppressed to zero suppressed to zero we will lose all phase or initial we will not have any idea about the initial phase information or we will lose we will lose all phase uh, relation between the amplitude coefficient cz and ce okay so this is uh, very important and in fact uh, this is what phase dephasing is so this is what phase dephasing is i hope um, this uh, issue is uh, clear let me once again repeat suppose the energy levels are sharply defined there is no energy uh, there is no energy fluctuation in any of the energy levels then the density operator here would be having the elements like this say cg cg star cg ce star cg uh, ce C, uh, cz star and uh, we'll have ce ce star but uh, when uh, one of the energy level is uh, fluctuating energy level fluctuate then this okay these elements would remain okay no problem with this of diagonal element uh, diagonal elements but uh, these elements so you will uh, here as i already we saw that this would be cz ce star and then along with it you will have e to the power i omega a t and because of the this particular term okay which is 
due to the fluctuation of the energy level similarly uh, here you will have that similar kind of term okay so that would be basically let me write it so here we will have terms like say uh, c e c z star e to the power minus i omega a t and you'll have e to the power i phi okay or whatever minus so this is what we'll have and these terms would be less than this term and because of that this particular state is no longer going to be this one is no longer going to be pure rather it is mixed on the other hand this is pure state now i will not go into the details but in many practical cases the ones that we generally encounter in circuit qed or in quantum optomechanics which is the topic for the next module or in quantum optomechanics uh, mostly this particular fluctuating term e to the power i phi of t okay when we take average over all the fluctuation is approximated is approximated as e to the power minus gamma phi of t so this actually this term uh, decays exponentially with time and here this particular decay rate gamma phi is known as the dephasing rate this is called dephasing rate this kind of uh, quantum noise when we make this kind of approximation this is comes under something called gaussian noise so let us not bother too much about how it came and all these things but this is i think for our uh, course this is this one is uh, sufficient uh, a good approximation and this is enough for us to know now the question is can we build up a relaxation operator in the lean blood quantum master equation uh, which can take this phenomenon or the noise into account so this is what we can now answer and of course the answer is yes in the in the quantum master equation let me write it as qme quantum master equation what we expect we expect that our uh, this co coherence term would it should decay at the rate gamma phi so we are expecting so this is basically z rho dot e we expect that we will have a some kind of say some term would be here and that would be the usual bear dynamics usual bear dynamics and apart from that there would be a term referring to the decay that would be gamma phi rho z e so as you can see so this is going to give us the required relation and similar expression you can get it for uh, rho e z okay so similarly for rho e z you will get some terms here and then here you will have gamma phi rho e z now we want an operator so we are given the decay rate to be this one that is the dephasing rate gamma phi now what about the uh, relaxation operator the operator which takes us uh, because there is no actually relaxation what we having is this kind of a situation we are in the ground state and here this is the excited state we have these two energy state but there is no transition but fluctuation is happening in the energy level here upper energy level so as if we are going from this energy level and going uh, back to it okay so this is what is we are having so this is actually taken uh, we can guess it as we are going from 
excited energy state again to the another excited uh, again to the same excited state and then this is typically given by this uh, uh, relation okay this is what the relaxation operator in this case for the pure dephasing case so if we have this then we can easily write down the Lindblad master equation for pure dephasing case so Lindblad quantum master equation master equation for pure dephasing for pure dephasing let us now write it so we are given a phi and the decay rate is there so this would be time rate of change of the density operator the first term gives us the coherent evolution and then we are having the decay rate that is gamma phi and in fact because root 2 so you you know the uh, master equation so let me write the master equation for the dephasing case so that would be we will have terms like this e rho e e please verify it uh, and you have minus half e e rho and minus half rho e e so this is what the quantum master equation actually you can very easily obtain uh, from this Lindblad master equation you can show that you will get Z rho dot E would be equal to minus gamma phi Z rho E in fact this particular term because coherent evolution if the Hamiltonian is diagonalized then this term who is going to be zero this contribution from this term would be zero and you will obtain this equation and you see this clearly shows that the uh, coherence actually decays at the rate exponentially it decays at gamma phi so now let me uh, discuss one important issue suppose uh, we are having this transmon qubit we are having this transmon qubit or any um, or any two level uh, system in the presence of uh, relaxation and dephasing in the presence of in the presence of relaxation and dephasing so what i mean by this is this so this is a very uh, common situation and often this kind of situation is encountered when we are dealing with artificial two-level quantum system we have processes like this suppose there is a downward transition which is happening at the rate gamma minus and there is thermal excitation which is happening at the rate gamma plus and apart from that there is this dephasing is also happening okay because suppose this energy level is not fluctuating with time or some kind of a phase decay is there so then how one can uh, take this into account now we have actually taken all the cases separately so therefore we can combine all of them and then we can write down the Lindblad master equation for example we can write down the relaxation process for the downward uh, downward transition as this we are going from the excited state to the ground state and which is basically your atomic lowering operator and this is happening at the rate gamma minus then we have this process a plus where we go from the this is excitation we are going from the ground state to the excited state this is atomic raising operator and this is happening at rate gamma plus and then in addition to the all these things we are having this dephasing where we are going from the excited state to the excited state okay and this is happening at the rate gamma phi using this one can very easily set up the Lindblad quantum master equation and from it 
you should be able to obtain uh, uh, these density uh, operator equations the density matrix equations basically for all the elements for example very straightforwardly you should be able to get it so please do that you will get time rate of change of this term would be equal to minus gamma minus rho e e plus gamma plus rho z z and then you will get rho uh, dot z z this is for the time evolution of the uh, ground state probability that is basically minus of this term because the total probability is equal to 1 so you can easily get it so therefore this would be simply gamma minus rho e e minus gamma plus rho z z and these coherence terms decay if we can get uh, it will be from the master equation you can show that you will get terms like this it would be rho z e minus you will get gamma plus plus gamma minus by 2 and you will have plus gamma phi so these are total decay and then here you will have rho z e the other equation is straightforward to get because you have rho e z is is equal to rho z e this is the hermitian conjugate so these are actually called the these are called dissipative uh, block equation earlier we have studied block equations uh, without uh, presence of any noise so now if also noise or dissipations are taken into account so these are called dissipative block equations and these equations are capable of describing uh, the dynamics of an artificial qubit or transmon in the presence of quantum noise uh, finally now let me give you a, a quick prescription uh, on how to work out the decay or relaxation rates we can work out the decay rates using the so-called fermi golden rule and this rule you must be familiar with because you may have studied in your quantum mechanics course maybe in the chapter called uh, time dependent perturbation theory let me explain the rule say we have the system and the environment suppose we have this system and this is surrounded by some environment this environment is also uh, called but environment or but and this environment and the bath is say it is getting coupled to each other by some coupling uh, parameter say z and um, the the interaction between uh, them or the coupling between them is responsible for all the relaxation process so coupling coupling between the system coupling between the system and environment environment or but is responsible is responsible for all relaxation process all relaxation process that means whether upward transition or the downward transition uh, processes in the system okay so we know this uh, let us say the interaction hamiltonian has this generic form the interaction hamiltonian for the bath and the system has this generic form say say a refers to the system let me put a s that refers to the system part and then we have the another part refers to the environment so this is the system part and this is the environment or but so we have this let us say the system is initially in the state say uh, ket i and the 
its final state is say f or any state suppose it is going from the syst uh, state uh, it transiting from the state gate i to the state gate f by emitting an excitation it may be an atomic case it would may be a photon okay so according to fermi golden rule uh, so in this case the transition is happening from initial state to the some state say f and according to the fermi golden rule the relaxation rate when we are going from the state i to the state f or which i can simply write it as gamma f i this is given as per the fermi rule by this i will explain it first of all this interaction is happening uh, within the si transition is happening within the system so via this system part of the hamiltonian it's going from the state i to the state f this is the transition probability uh, if i take the mod square so and this is caused by the environment and or the bath and this is give evaluated at this is called the, i will explain what this guy is ff and this is evaluated at the frequency omega let me write it uh, here this is evaluated at the transition frequency of the system say omega is equal to ei energy of the gate i and f e f is the energy of the gate f divided by h cross this is evaluated at this particular frequency and this is basically the spectrum because this is evaluated at frequency omega this is the spectrum of the fluctuating bat operator spectrum of the fluctuating fluctuating bat operator bat operator evaluated at omega and f is basically it's a it, it's a uh, it's a no noise or a f is a noise or uh, perturbation we can take it like a perturbation perturbation due to the environment and the noise spectrum this quantity is basically the noise spectrum and uh, this is nothing but the fourier transformation of the correlator so this is the bath operator uh, f of t at a time t and this is evaluated at time t is equal to zero and then if we take the uh, averaging of these two quantities product of these two quantity and then we take the integral and this is the fourier transformation we are having here it's going from say minus infinity to plus infinity so this particular quantity is known as the correlator this is called the correlator what it gives it basically relates the bath operator at two different time and separated uh, by um, by time t so this correlator this correlator um, relates relates the bath operator or the environment operator bath operator at two different times two different times separated by time difference separated by time difference as you can see it is simply t here now this quantity f of t which is the time evolved fluctuating quantity it is actually time evolved fluctuating quantity representing the bath fluctuating quantity and this is important to remember that as per the heisenberg picture this quant this is averaged when we take the average it is averaged with respect to the with respect to the uncoupled system 
with respect to the uncoupled system. That means when we are averaging it, we are not considering the coupling, we are just considering the basis state of the uncoupled system and then we are calculating the expectation value. So basically what I am saying is that when we are writing this quantity or working out this parameter, this term here, this is the expectation value, the expectation value, the expectation value is taken this is important to remember is taken with respect to the unperturbed with respect to the unperturbed unperturbed that is not yet coupled but okay with respect to the unperturbed but okay in fact it uh, turns out that uh, this quantity this quantity or the noise spectrum when we evaluate this it is real valued is real valued and um, it is non-negative or it is positive and is non-negative okay that means greater always greater than zero a typical uh, spectrum generally looks like this uh, we'll see some example later on uh, suppose we plot this noise spectrum here with respect to frequency typically uh, we'll get a plot like this so this is in the quantum case suppose this is your omega is equal to zero and this is not symmetric around omega is equal to zero as you can see suppose we have this two point here say p and then you see q and as you can see this point p here here omega is greater than zero at the point q the omega is less than zero and you see they are not both sides are not symmetrically located it is basically not symmetric in the quantum case however this is uh, uh, not symmetric not symmetric around the uh, omega is equal to zero omega is equal to zero in the quantum case in the quantum case however in the classical case and but in classical case and this has many physical implication in the classical case it is symmetric it is symmetric around omega is equal to zero that means if we'll get the spectrum to be something like this it would be let me draw it properly so it would be symmetric suppose this is ff in the classical case if it is omega is equal to zero this is omega then it will be symmetric in the classical case okay this asymmetric behavior as uh, we have in the quantum case this is asymmetric this uh, spectrum um, this is asymmetric about omega is equal to zero in quantum mechanical case and this has some phys interesting physics for example if we look at the point p you see at the point p as i said at the point p we have omega is greater than zero now what it physically mean the spectrum when omega is greater than zero you see omega we are defining as ei minus ef divided by h cross that means the transition is taking place from the state i to state f and uh, this is system is going from the state i to state f by emitting some kind of an excitation here okay that means the system 
when omega is greater than zero the system is releasing we can say or system better let us say system relaxes the system relaxes uh, and the bath and the bath absorbs energy the bath in the process gets energy absorbs energy okay on the other hand if you look at the point q where omega is less than zero this side here then in this case as you can make it out the system is excited the opposite things happen the system is excited excited and uh, so the bath uh, supplies some energy the bath supplies some energy to the system so in this case the system is going from the lower state to the say excited state and in the process the bath is supplying this energy so this is what the physical implication is in fact what happens in thermal equilibrium as you see in thermal equilibrium there is always a larger tendency for the environment to absorb some energy then to supply some energy to the system okay let me write here in thermal equilibrium the uh, there is there is always a larger tendency there is always a larger tendency of the for the environment or the bath for the environment for the environment to absorb to absorb some energy from the system some energy from the system then to supply then to supply energy to the system okay but interesting things happen at t is equal to zero what about at t is equal to zero case in this case you see at t is equal to zero the bath has no energy the bath has no energy to supply while okay the enver at absolute zero temperature bath has no energy to supply and you see omega less than zero refers to the case the other side of uh, on the left hand side of omega is equal to zero that represents the part where the environment is supplying energy so as you can see in the absolute zero temp at t is equal to zero temperature uh, the spectrum would look like this so here we'll have a situation like this suppose at t is equal to zero the spectrum will uh, will be of this type okay here omega greater than zero and this is omega and this is your omega is equal to zero so for example if we have a qubit or an atom um, it can easily emit a photon uh, into the empty vacuum field empty vacuum field we can consider as the bath and atom is the system at zero temperature and this is why in general uh, we'll f we know in circuit qvd or even the topic that we are going to discuss in the next module uh, of quantum optomechanics we will we'll get into this kind of picture again and again as you know that whether in circuit qvd or in this kind of uh, system or quantum optomechanics the system is always kept at a very very low temperature nearly equal to zero temperature so the spectrum there will always get like this let me stop here for today in this lecture we learned about the phenomenon of pure uh, defacing and we saw how quantum Lindblad master equation can be used to incorporate this phenomenon and after that we discussed the dissipative block equation in the context of a qubit where both relaxation processes and pure phase defacing are taken into account finally very briefly we discussed about the fermi golden rule which is used to uh, calculate various decay rates 
in the next lecture we will start uh, uh, discussing quantum optomechanics which is another potential platform which is exploited nowadays for various quantum technological applications. In fact, we'll see there that some of the tools that we have learned in this module as well as in this lecture is going to be very useful. So see you in the next class. Thank you.